A Cloudflare outage has once again broken large parts of the internet and forced millions of people to go outside and touch grass for a few hours. So let's investigate how the one little orange cloud boy managed to take down the greatest communications network that mankind has ever built. So the first thing you need to understand is the role of content delivery networks or CDNs, which is the primary function of Cloudflare. So whenever you build a website, you're basically just putting content on a computer that's available for the whole world to see. And that computer could be in your house, it could be in a data center, but the point is the computer with the content has a physical geographic location. And anyone who is physically close to that computer, say a user in South Carolina browsing a website that's hosted on a server in Atlanta, is gonna have a fairly fast connection to it. But if someone from China wants to access that same website, the connection is gonna be a little bit slower. And not just because of the distance, but primarily because of how many routers that traffic has to go through in order to get to your website. So that's where the CDNs come in. They cache the content of your website that's hosted in Atlanta on servers all over the world, giving faraway visitors a much better experience. And CDNs also vastly reduce the load that is put on that main computer that is hosting the website because the content that doesn't change very often, like say your website's banner or images of the products that I sell on base.win, they can be cached and loaded from a server that's actually closer to your users instead of my main Volter server. And the other benefit of CDNs, especially the big ones like Cloudflare, is that since they're handling so much of the internet's traffic, they're able to do a wide scale in-depth analysis of this traffic to mitigate DDoS and hacking threats. Now, personally, I use Bunny CDN, but the vast majority of websites and services use Cloudflare because they're the biggest, and some people also consider them the best. But when everyone on the internet puts their eggs in the Cloudflare basket, you get exactly what happened on Tuesday, the terminally online being forced to exist offline. The outage was so bad that even the down detector went down because their infrastructure depended on Cloudflare as well. So now someone has created a down detector for the down detector so that when your down detector isn't detecting, you can get the rundown of just how down the internet really is. So everyone just decided to put their trust in Cloudflare. That's really the problem because it's a central point of failure which caused the internet to go out or really just all the websites that depended on Cloudflare to go out. But the cause of Cloudflare's outage is where I think the real irony is because people like to joke about things like sharks biting undersea cables causing an internet outage. I'm sure that you've seen all the memes posted this week, but the real sea creature to blame here is the fucking crab. That's right, the Rust programming language, the memory safe language that the world wants people to exclusively use going forward. Specifically, it was an unhandled exception in part of the Cloudflare network's core code that had been rewritten in Rust. And the issue was triggered by a change to one of their database systems that caused a configuration file for Cloudflare's bot management system to be misconfigured. Basically, there were multiple entries getting written to this file and so, it was larger than expected, and the larger than expected file then got propagated to all of the machines that make up Cloudflare's network, and the machines that had the Rust software running on it crashed whenever they tried to read this misconfigured file, which ultimately resulted in a gigantic DDoS attack to Cloudflare's new FL proxy system and a broken bot detection system for the old one. Now I'll leave a link to Cloudflare's blogs because they have a much better and more in-depth technical explanation of the issues. So you can access those in the video's description. But according to Cloudflare's blogs, the Rust-based proxy system, AKA FL2, was introduced around late September. So it really isn't even that new. And the reason they created it is they wanted to replace the old system, not just because writing things in Rust is trendy, but because the old system was based on Nginx web server with product logic that was implemented in PHP, and the overall system was becoming too complex to manage effectively and was thought to be too slow for Cloudflare standards. Yet, this old, slow, and complex Nginx slash PHP implementation that some of Cloudflare's users haven't been migrated from yet was mostly unaffected by the great Cloudflare outage. They didn't suffer through hours of downtime, which in some cases equates to millions of dollars in lost revenue, 
The only real side effect of that incident for users of the old system was that all of the traffic going to their websites was receiving a bot score of zero. So basically bots weren't being filtered effectively. Um, and for the last few hours that the bug was going on, the users of the old system maybe would have been more susceptible to DDoS attacks, but the people on the new system were literally getting DDoS from within. They were getting bad gateway errors every time people tried to access their websites. And I guess on the flip side, if nobody can access your site, then obviously bots can't either. But honestly, it's better to have some bots accessing your site than nobody at all. Now, let's address the elephant, or rather the crab in the room, that seems to really enjoy breaking things. It's really easy to blame the Rust programming language itself for this problem, especially when you notice this pattern of old programs that have years or even decades of reliability being replaced by Rust implementations that almost immediately cause severe bugs. But the real problem is fixing what isn't broken and more specifically pushing out these fixes that are broken themselves when they don't even have full feature parity like we saw here with FL versus FL2 or with the GNU core utils versus uutils in Ubuntu. The core issue with Cloudflare's implementation is really a failure of understanding that if an unwrap fails within your code, then the program is going to crash. And this is also why it's considered bad practice to use unwrap in production Rust code. It also doesn't help that most other languages that do some kind of unwrapping of a value do it in a non-panicking way. Normally, you would expect to get the value you want or nothing and not a crash. And even if you think of this as like a non-programmer, just as a complete layman, you would think that unwrapping a gift, for example, means that you're gonna get something you want or nothing of value, not the present you want or a live frag grenade that just blows up the entire room and ruins everyone's Christmas. And so if you're rewriting your infrastructure like the Cloudflare devs did, it's pretty easy to see why mistakes like this could come up. Which is why there's a lot of Rust developers that want to rename the unwrap function to or panic to try and avoid this semantic confusion in the future because maybe if people actually write the words or panic in their code base, they'll realize that this can throw an error that causes their whole program to crash and maybe causes the whole internet to crash with it. But then again, making a change like this now that so many people are using Rust is probably just gonna end up breaking a lot more things. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what you name your functions. If someone is using them without reading and understanding the documentation first, mistakes are going to happen regardless of what unwrap is called. So the real lesson here for current and future web developers is to just not put all your eggs in the Cloudflare basket. I mean, they're rewriting their infrastructure in a trendy language right now without taking enough time, in my opinion, to write the language correctly. And most websites out there don't really need a CDN at all. I mean, CDNs are really often just used as a Band-Aid solution to the issue of a bloated website, which is the real reason why so many websites are slow. Debloating website also helps to mitigate the effectiveness of DDoS attacks, which is another thing that so many people think they need a CDN to defend against, but most sites on the internet, like if we're being real, they're only gonna get a handful of visitors each month. Hardly anyone cares to visit your website, let alone DDoS it. And if you end up running a very successful web service with millions of visitors that's monetized effectively, so you're making money and maybe there is some you know, reason that someone would want to DDoS you out of jealousy or maybe to try to get you to pay them off, then you're going to be able to probably afford your own CDN at that point, or at the very least, make some backups of your servers, like have backup servers that you can set up in a round robin DNS style and just sleep easier at night knowing that your infrastructure doesn't depend on a centralized resource and you can keep making money while everyone else's website is down. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.